Welcome back guys, Pete with the River Kings. I'm here on Hammock Ridge on my property and I'm walking to my little hammock spot and we are gonna string up a Warbonnet Superfly. Now when I first got started hammock camping, I needed a tent around my hammock is what I was going for. And a lot of these newer doored configurations and winter tarps were not readily available on the market. So I went with the Kelty Noah's Tarp 16 and that is a all the way to the ground wall tarp with doors and that has worked wonderful for me for years and years and years almost a decade actually but now there's a bunch of manufacturers producing high quality lightweight tarps and i'm going to show you one today it's going to be the war bonnet superfly all right guys here it is the war bonnet 13 foot superfly seal nylon and uh, it is not the color of the stuff sack it is an olive drab which is my preferred color. I believe they call this evergreen. I'm not sure, but I'll put all the specs to this tarp in the description below. If you're interested in weight and all that kind of gobbledygook, you can go there. I like to talk about tarps for the thing they do best, and that is keep you warm and dry. If it cannot do that, I don't care about the other stuff. All right, guys, so the first step is obviously hanging your ridge line. This is the same system I use. I have a couple different configurations. If you're interested in a ridgeline, check out my ridgeline video somewhere in here. So why a superfly or a giant wall tarp with doors? Uh, why do you need that? And for me, I was spending uh, over well over 100 nights a year in the field with the military. I spent a lot of time in the woods with a lot of really high speed folks. And I needed something that I could live under for 100 days a year out of. Hot, cold, doesn't matter. So in the winter months, I needed a winter tarp. So as my hammock camping evolved, what I found was the little tarps that come with the hammocks like a Hennessy or the smaller ultralight tarps that they wanna sell you to be ultralight are good, but they do not keep everything dry. They keep the hammock dry in most cases, but you and your gear, if you're not in the hammock, you're gonna be wet. There's nowhere to live under it. There's nowhere to exist. And I needed more than just a footprint to keep my hammock dry. I needed something to keep Number one, the water out, the heat in, and I needed some space to put all my stuff. The idea is that I needed a tent around my hammock, and so I came up with the Kelty winter tarp configuration. You may have seen that video. I'll put right up here in a card. It's bomb proof. It is not lightweight, it is not small, but it will keep you warm and dry in the winter. A lot of these hammock companies, War Bonnet being one, have started making bigger tarps with doors. I'm gonna show you the Superfly today and I'm gonna give it a hard look for use in this upcoming season. All right, so right off the bat, the first decision you're gonna to need to make is, do you put the tarp over the ridge line or under the ridge line? The hammock community is split on this topic and there are good reasons for both. I personally always go over. And the reason is I like my gear to last a long time. And if you hang this under heavy wind, snow loads as you can see me doing there any force you push on there will be acting on this tarp and when you put this tarp over the ridge line the ridge line is then able to take a lot of the structural load rather than the tarp shouldering that so for me i go over the ridge line one thing i really love about the war bonnets is this little miniature key ring they use for a tarp uh, attachment and it works perfect for me as you can see i have the little s beaners and prusiks onto my ridge line and it's just a quick clip that thing's on there i don't monkey around with a lot of extra hardware a lot of times when my fingers are cold i want the easiest way to get this tarp on and off and bigger hardware without knot tying is that answer for me all right so now we got the tarp over the ridge line and this fabric strip here on the seam of the two sheets of tarp uh, not only hold it together, but they also act as a built-in ridge line. Very static, strong, durable. I think they call it Grogain. Not sure on how you exactly say that. I know what it looks like when you spell it, but I never talk about it. But that's what it is. And it kind of acts as a built-in ridge line. It keeps that seam together, keeps the tarp from ripping out. But if you keep a tarp in any other configuration than what I'm showing here, if the tarp is going to have water running past this seam versus just coming down. You will need to seam seal that. You don't have to do it from the factory as long as you leave the seam like this. If you're gonna arrange the tarp in a different configuration, you will need to, to seam, uh, seam seal that. And they do give you that when you purchase your tarp. 
All right, the next step in the process is um, tying out your ends of your tarp. And I always use s beaners and pre-made 1.5 millimeter cord. I do like the plastic triangular D-rings that Warbonnet puts on there. The corners are reinforced and sewn in. You can see that, they work great. Again, that's just so easy for me. And then I go tie a trucker's hitch on there and we're set. All right, almost forgot to mention Warbonnet does supply you with these two small carabiners. And that is meant to give you the option of going ahead and closing your gable ends or your doors before you start stringing to make sure everything stays in the right spot. All right, so we got the tarp strung up uh, completely. Uh, I've used these side pullouts as well. They give you a little more room on the inside. Uh, make sure this is close here and I'm just hanging it for the video, but you don't want to have any abrasion between tarp and tree or tarp and anything else. When you're setting up, just make sure your tarp is not interacting with anything. These little D-rings on the doors also work great if you want to just clip them in and pull it out of the way. So they, they fit perfectly for that. All right, you can see the little carabiner they give you holding the doors together. Uh, if I was interested, I could take a little piece of rope and pull that down tight and uh, probably would do that if I was camping. But I would not stake it. I would just, I would put a little rope here around this tree and just hold it right there to the tree. The fewer stakes, the better for me because stakes pull out and trees do not. If the tree pulls out, you have other problems and you probably won't be worried about your hammock at that point. All right, we are now under the tarp, and as you can see, there's a pretty good bit of headroom. If I was to stand up uh, the way I've got it hung, it just does come to my hat, and it would be rubbing. But we're kind of we're kind of into some footprint now that for me is worth is worth having in inclement weather, be it warm or cold. But basically, you just want to be able to cover. Golly, that was ferocious. Basically, you wanna be able to cover enough footprint with the roof that you can keep not only your hammock dry, but your gear as well. I can set all my gear in here, get it off the ground with a few sticks. I could put a camp chair. I can roll the hammock up, get it out of the way, and three, four, five, six people could come in here if needed and cook dinner or breakfast or lunch. But it's just, a, it's big enough to actually work when you're living under a tarp. So what they've designed here is a tarp that's a good compromise between a ultralight backpacking tarp and a tarp that's big enough with a big enough footprint that you can live comfortably in inclement weather. And it does a very good job at that. So I've had war bonnet tarps for years. I love them. They've always lasted well for me. They've held up. I've not had any issues with them. And so war bonnet sent me the Superfly. I'm going to be using it this year. Here's the things I don't like about it. It's not bigger. That's really all I can say. I like the 13 foot ridge length and I, I'm good with that. I think that's actually a pretty good ridge length, especially with the, do the doors configured the way they are. But I need eight foot sidewalls. These are only five foot sidewalls and that's what you get. A lot of wind coming through here. But if I can get an eight foot sidewall, then I can tarp that to the ground and that will keep all the heat in. There will be no wind, and that's gonna make a big difference when you're hammock camping in the really cold winter. Uh, and I do have under quilts and all that good stuff, but I'm telling you, if you can keep the tarp to the ground, seal off airflow, it's way better. Uh, it'll be 10, 15 degrees warmer in here than it will be out there, and that just makes all your quilts and all your uh, sleep system work even better. Give me three more feet of sidewall and a door that extends all the way out to that, and I, I will be in hammock camping heaven. But I do like this tarp. I will be using it and uh, it's pretty sweet. And all gear for outdoors is, or at least should be purpose built and purpose chosen. And I have, I've lived outside where there's no tarps, no sleeping bags. You just walk in the clothes you brought and this is where we're stopping for the night. Everyone sits down, you may lay in your you may not even take your backpack and your boots off. You may just be leaning up against a tree. Um, it may be raining. It may not be raining. You're just going to deal with it. And that's kind of miserable. But that's all you really need. So when you start adding tarps, you're just adding a tool to accomplish something for you while you're in the outdoors. And for me, 
I've been miserable plenty of times before. I'm okay with it. If I get miserable, I get miserable, but I choose not to in most cases. So for me, I'm gonna choose a tarp that's actually going to accomplish what I want it to accomplish. If you can be warm and dry at night, you can survive any day knowing you'll be warm and dry at night. But when you're gonna be when you're gonna be miserable at night, the days are even worse, trust me. So for me, when I'm choosing trees, I really like to choose a tree, if possible, that is only about a foot longer than the ridgeline length of the tarp. And that gives you a little play to set it up. You don't want it too tight. You definitely don't want it shorter or you end up having to wrap your tarp around the tree or something funky, which we've all done, uh, if you're honest with yourself and you've been hammock camping for a while, you've had some not so good hangs where you just had to make it work. Since the ridge line is wrapped around the tree right there, six inches from the end of the tarp, there's not a lot of play there. It also doesn't allow a lot of rain to get on your hammock straps. And so you don't have a lot of line, ridge line getting rained on to wick in. You don't have a lot of hammock strap getting rained on. All that's important when you're trying to keep water off of you when you're camping. Now these little seal nylon and seal poly tarps are, are very, um, you just got to take care of them a little bit. They're, they're not super fragile. They're actually tougher than you might think but they are not like canvas. Uh, they do not handle heat very well, so keep keep your stoves away from them. Don't hit them with a knife, obviously. Don't hit them with a, a hot jet boil. And they'll last years and years and years. The seal nylon is a little tougher than the seal poly, and you'll get a lot of, you'll get a lot of different opinions on which one is better. I don't get wrapped up in that stretchy water absorption stuff. This will dry super fast. It's not gonna really absorb that much water. It's not gonna stretch that much. It's not gonna make a difference to me. About half the companies out there offer both seal nylon and seal poly tarps. Anywhere that has stitching, basically you, you seam seal that and prevent any, any leakage. I've never really had issues with tarps. Other people seem to have a lot of issues. I've even, I've even used the, the cheapo uh, Walmart or you know, Home Depot Lowe's tarps, the big, the big plasticky things. I've had to use those a time or two. I stay dry under that. So um, a lot of people make a lot more out of a tarp than it really is. This is some fabric that keeps rain off of you. Anywhere the tarp is attached to in the middle, uh, I do like to add a little bungee length if you can see that. That way you don't really over tighten your tarp and giant gust of wind, a small branch falls, some guy runs through your camp and hits it uh, you're not ripping your stuff up there. All right, for those of you who are wanting to know the technical specs, those will be in the description. Uh, I do not get wrapped around that axle. For me, it's just got to accomplish what I want it to do and be a good quality piece of gear. And then when you have those two things, is it the lightest? Is it, is it the strongest? Is it the best? You know, all those things will play into it. But I really just could care less about, you know, if it weighs two ounces more or less than the next guy. It's how well does it accomplish its purpose. I've done ultralight. I've done <laughs> ultra heavy, 100 plus pound packs. It's not really backpacking. It's, it's just misery. There's no other way to put it. I've done meat hikes with 100 plus pounds of meat on my back. Carrying a little extra tarp, if it'll keep me warm and dry, I'll do it every day of the week. All right, guys, so this is what I'm talking about. I got my hammock strap. Uh, comes in right at the right at the height of the ridge line so I don't have any interaction between the strap and the ridge line. If your trees are further apart, uh, you will start having to um, deal with that in one way or another. But I'm strung up at about 14 and a half feet apart, these trees, and that just gives me about eight inches, nine inches of gap between the tree and the start of the tarp. Perfect. And then there's my war bonnet blackbird inside. Um, plenty of room to have a hammock and gear. I'm walking. You can probably see that. I'm just walking beside my hammock here. So if it was raining right now, I'm out of the hammock, but I'm still dry. Plenty of coverage. Um, I could cook breakfast. I could have my gear stowed. Uh, plenty of room to do all that. And that's really what I'm all about. I'm not, I'm not trying to cramp my lifestyle as much as humanly possible to stay dry barely so that I can save a few ounces. Don't care a thing about it. I just want the thing to work. I want it to work well. I can reach my hand out. I'm not hitting the edge of the tarp. 
all that would be dry. I'm not skimping on space in here. I really like this size tarp. I, I like the length. I like the width. Uh, I could definitely make this work. If it got really, really, really cold, I would be dreaming about those eight-foot walls because it would make it makes an incredible difference to cut that air off. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. That is the War Bonnet Superfly, 13-foot ridge line. I highly recommend this tarp. It is a really, really good tarp. All their all their gear is quality gear. I've been sleeping in this hammock for years, not one issue. I've had some of their other tarps, the smaller ones. It's been on every single trip I've done for the last four or five years, and I use it quite often. Very pleased with it. Super excited to get this bigger one, and uh, we'll be using it on a pretty big camping trip in some pretty, pretty cold weather. We're doing a big kayak camping trip here in the next few weeks, and um, it's not going to be around here. It's going to be a little chilly. Thanks for, thanks for tuning in.